Hello, in this episode we are going to look at alterable values and flags for objects. And what alterable values and alterable strings and flags are, are variables. And variables are little containers for any type of data. It could be text data in an alterable string, it could be numeric data in an alterable value, or it could be a simple uh, true-false and that's kind of what a flag holds. Holds. It's either on or off, zero or one, yes or no, um, just two states. So let's just make a new application and hopefully by now this is getting pretty easy. And let's give ourselves, um, let's see, we're in the text right now, so let's give ourselves a string object. And let's clone this, so we have two string objects. And let's give ourselves an active object. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to make our active object bounce around the screen. So I'll go to the Movements tab and give it a simple little bouncing ball movement. And I want it to bounce off the sides, so let's make ourselves a new event. And hopefully, again, this is starting to become pretty easy. Let's test the position and select all these corners and do a movement bounce so let's see how we're doing here okay this is bouncing all off the sides just exactly how we wanted it okay back to the frame editor and I'm gonna go over on the active objects value screen and here's where you can define names for alterable values which again is numeric data and alterable strings which is any type of text data so I'm just gonna make a new alterable value and I'm gonna double click on this and I like to give these guys names I'm gonna call it bounces and I'm gonna just keep the default there the in, in initialization value is zero alterable strings we can let's say we wanted to name it and why not Fred? So when we start our application, bounces is going to be set to zero and name is going to contain Fred. So let's, well, we might as well make one more string then, shouldn't we, to display our name? I hadn't thought of that. Okay. So what I want to do here, get those guys kind of lined up, the top string. I'm going to give it, this is going to be string for bounces. And this is going to be a string for flag status. And this one is going to be a string for name. That's just giving me a little representation of what I wanted each of those strings to contain. Of course, we haven't changed the string yet, so something we have to do in the event editor. Okay, so this one is going to count the bounces. Okay, so back to the event editor. And we already have this event here, active leaves the play area. And I'm going to go under the active object, alterable values, I am going to add to. And you can see that it lists a whole bunch of them because an object can have unlimited alterable values. We've only named one of them bounces and I'm just going to add one to it. Okay, now, so every time it bounces it's going to add one to that alterable value. We need to display that. And here is our string bounces. See how those names kind of come in handy? Now I know that this one, change alterable text, I'm going to do number of bounces and plus now here is where you might get a little confused. If I try to just retrieve values, oh, I better bring that up so you guys can see, values retrieve bounces, you're going to see it has mixed string and numbers. Because this is a text, it can only contain string data, and I'm trying to put in a value. So what I can do is I can use this string function right here and inside that I can retrieve bounces 
and it turns that into a string. And there's a corresponding one value. So if I have a string that contains an actual number, I can change it into a value to display it in a counter or something like that. Okay, so let's run our application right now. And you can see every time it hits the side, it adds one to the number of bounces. Okay, so let's display our name right now. And I'm just going to do that on a start a frame. And I'm going to find our name string, change alterable string. And my name is, let's put a space there, plus I am going to retrieve multiple strings, name. So if we run our game right now, you can see my name is Fred and we're counting the bounces. Okay, so we have to do something with the flags. Alright, let's first we want to toggle our flag every time we push the space key. So let's make an event for that and keyboard upon pressing a key space and go into our object flags toggle this is just pretty simple that if it's on turn it off if it's off turn it on flags are numbered 0 to 31 so there's only 32 flags it'll roll over if you try to use a higher number so just remember that there's 32 flags per object so we'll put in a number zero. So this is going to toggle zero. And I need some way to display that data. So we can test. We can test the active object. Flag. Is flag on? And flag zero again. What happens if it's on? Well, I want to change our flag status to say the flag is on and if our flag is off flag zero I'm going to drag and drop this down and edit it to say off now one thing I like to do is optimize my event editor. So right now, every time this loops, it's going to be checking, hey, is the flag on? Change the string. Is the flag on? Change the string. Is the flag off? Change the string. We want to add a second condition. And I want to limit this condition to only one action when events loop. And I'm going to put the same condition on the other one. Add new condition limit conditions only one action when events loop now what this is going to do is it's only going to run once every time the flag changes so it's going to come on if i press the space bar and turn it on it's going to say hey is flag on hey i haven't run this yet set the string the second time it loops through it's going to say i already did that i already did that until i turn it off and then it's going to come down and it's going to go hey, I haven't ran this one yet, and it's going to turn it off. So it just kind of cuts down some processing because it won't change the string every time until that flag changes. So hopefully that makes sense and not super confusing. Let's see if we did it right. So let's run our application. Okay, and you can say, you know, flag is off, my name is Fred. If I press the space key, flag is on. And you can do something fun like, oh, if the flag is on, let's change the speed to 10. And if the flag is off, we'll change the speed to oh, 100. All right, so run our game right now. You can see it's going really fast. And if I press the space key, it starts going really slow. Okay, one other little thing to look at is the debugger. You've seen it kind of up in the corner, but I haven't mentioned it yet. On the start of frame, I am going to 
add our active object to the debugger. So if we run our application right now, you can see our debugger over here. And you can see we have the active object. And if I pause this, I can go in here and I can see the active values. I can see alterable strings. I can see the status of the flags. So this is a nice, you know, they call it a debugger because you can debug your application. Okay, so where's our flags? Right down here. Flag zero false. If I press the space key, flag zero true. False, true. So it gives you, a, you can go inspect while your application is running, you know, is the correct data getting to your alterable values, your alterable strings. There's also global values and global strings, and those are located in your application. And those are global, so you can refer to those any place across multiple frames, uh, multiple objects. So this is a great place to store variables that are used by many objects. And then on your individual objects, these variables are only in reference to that one object. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. And alterable values, alterable strings and flags are something you're going to use a lot. So become comfortable with them. My tip of advice is to always name them because then when you do conditions, they uh, are easy to read. You know, the bounces of active is equal to zero. I know that that's going to refer to the bounces. If it said alterable value A, I would have no idea what that was. So it's always good to name everything, and it's especially important to name your alterable values and your alterable strings.